sessizliğin sadece. Small step interdisciplinary education, one giant leap for Westmead. And I'll hand over to Lorraine. Thank Thanks, you. Monica. Hello, everybody. Um, I'd like to start uh, first of all with a short uh, video on uh, Welcome to Country. <coughs> oh, where'd it go? <laughs> there we go. So that, that ended up, I think it's at the end. It's the end. It's the end. So it was, we will get there. What am I? Mitty Gar got him barak. Hello, friends, it's good to see you. My name's Greg Sims, everyone knows me as Uncle Greg. Firstly, I would like to acknowledge when Dudak land, I would like to acknowledge elders past and present. We don't own the land, the land owns us. We come from Mother Earth, we are the land. And the land we're upon today belongs to the Baramatical tribe of the Dudak nation, the Eel people. Where I fit in, I come from the Gadigal tribe of the Dudak, which is based in Sydney, and there I belong to the Whale people. I'm one of the Aboriginal elders of Western Sydney, and become an elder you have to do lots and lots of work in your community before you get respected in return. And we as elders, we are out there trying to turn people's lives around, out there breaking, knocking down barriers and building bridges. And the reason why I'm here today is to give a welcome for our friends of the Western Sydney Local Health District. Before I give the welcome, I'd just like to say one thing, is that when we take our next step, just remember the ones that walked this sacred land before. Tiari Mara, Daraka Pemel, Kaui Maria Pemel, the Galaringi Babona, Bonaimara Waranang, Nai Desi Gai, Diana Gamli Garalang, the Galaringi Tiari, the Galaringi Nagami Gai, Guli Wini and Gunagal, Da Gunagal, Dala Lowi Mugakat Bala Nagami, this is Lowi Ne Tri Mugunagal, Jamia Tiari, the Galaringi or the Jumla, Miriga and Gara and Barak Nina, Daraka Pemel, Didri Go. This is Dharak lands, the land of ancestors. Their spirits still walk among us. Spirits that have been here since the dream time. Our language and our culture have been passed down from generation to generation to continue an unbroken culture that has extended for thousands of years. In the language of our people, we welcome you to Dharak lands. Thank you and have a great day.
Non, non. Um, I would also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the Darug people of the Westmead lands, as well as the Baramatical people whose lands we are meeting on. I also acknowledge the elders and in particular those attending today's event. So uh, good afternoon and it's, and it's lovely to have you here. Uh, my name's Lorraine Smith and I'm one of the associate directors with the Education, Enterprise and Engagement team that's part of the Deputy Vice-Chancellor's Education Portfolio. And I'll be uh, talking to you today briefly, um, in, uh, the, the section that I will be uh, talking about to you, um, about our industry and community project units. Um, I'll give you some uh, background to that and then I'll pass on to Carla Edwards, who's our industry partner and uh, she will uh, give you her perceptions and experiences of how this project um, played out. And then we'll finish with uh, Chris, who uh, was the, um, the engine room behind all of this and who actually supervised the project over the semester. Um, so these industry and community project units are, across the, are being implemented across the university, so it's particularly nice to have them also running um, out here at Westmead. Um, we are working very hard, as you know, um, at all sorts of levels to strengthen um, our relationships between Sydney at Camperdown and Sydney at Westmead, as well as the local health district and all of those who, people who work there. So this is a, a, a really good development um, and it's an exciting development. The, uh, these industry and community project units are part of the University of Sydney strategic plan and uh, this was uh, implemented in 2016, a couple of years ago, uh, and the prime aim is to develop a, a distinctive Sydney education. Um, a lot of the work has been done around transforming the undergraduate curriculum uh, in, uh, across the, um, the liberal arts and sciences as well as into the uh, health professions. The, so the, this education transformation um, is, uh, we, we have, um, for example, a new Bachelor of, of Advanced Studies, which is for our liberal arts and, and sciences students. We're also moving into uh, reframing our professional degrees, including our health degrees. Um, and what underpins this is the development of this, uh, this suite of graduate qualities, which um, the university envisages as enabling our students when they graduate to have not only disciplinary depth from their particular discipline but also work ready skills to enable them to work as part of an interdisciplinary team, to be critical thinkers and good communicators. Um, our industry and community project units um, reflect these graduate qualities. So um, what I'm going to do now is just tell you a little bit about what these are. So they're I should start with what they aren't. They, they aren't a placement, they aren't an internship. These are a unit of study embedded in uh, degrees across the university. They're problem based, uh, they focus on an authentic real world um, problem that um, an industry partner has and this industry partner has joined with the university to work with these students on um, exploring um, possible solutions and ways forward with this particular problem. It's a truly interdisciplinary unit because we have students from a, a huge range of disciplines. So it's not just a sub-discipline, <coughs> you might be thinking about your particular discipline area. Think much more broadly. Think about uh, students from business, psychology, physiotherapy, engineering. The aims of these units are to enable our final year students to transition to careers with a suite of skills that um, give them an edge um, on their uh, competitors, uh, to provide them with the sorts of skills and knowledge that uh, employers these days are looking for. 
employers are not just looking for disciplinary depth anymore, they're looking for those critical thinking, uh, problem solving, teamwork skills. This is a, a list of the uh, projects that we ran in first semester. We have double the number in second semester. Uh, and this whole year we're treating as a pilot, so we are learning a lot about how these ICPUs are playing out. As you can see, we have a very wide range of, uh, pro of um, industry partners, everyone from banks, um, other uh, corporate consultancies, through to community groups, um, as well as local health districts. Um, they cross a wide range of um, authentic problems that these particular industry partners have, have, partners have brought to us. For so for example, um, the Art Gallery of New South Wales, their problem that they wanted our students to work <coughs> on was how to improve the visitor experience of their Chinese visitors. AGL had a really big picture question and that was how do we disconnect from the grid? So not just how would a home disconnect from the energy grid but how would a small town or a regional centre or indeed a city? So these are very challenging but exciting questions that um, our students were working on. Um, the teaching team, the, the critical people to uh, enabling these projects to come to fruition comprise project supervisors like Chris, um, unit of study coordinators who simply manage the marks management. Uh, we have tutors who have industry experience coming in at, at critical points over the semester to work with the students and the project supervisors. And uh, of course we have our industry partners and we also have our associate directors. So I'm one of those associate directors and my portfolio is the health portfolio. So we have three other associate directors and they work across the university in their particular portfolios as you can see there on the screen. So I'm going to hand over to Carla now and she's going to tell us about her experiences and perceptions of what it's been like to be an industry partner. Thanks Carla. Oh, I should give you this. Or you might just need to hold it. And if you can clip me up. Thank you. All right. Hi, all. I'm Carla Edwards from the redevelopment team here at Westmate. And um, as Lorraine outlined, I have the great pleasure to outline our experience as being an industry partner um, in this first semester um, of really embarking on a really different way for education for students in the future. We were delighted to be part of this opportunity. Um, and we were so delighted that in fact, throughout the semester we put in two project briefs <laughs> for semester two and managed to get one of those projects up. So I think uh, that's proof of concept right there and how well this um, approach to education, um, working with partners can work. Why would a redevelopment team be interested in working with the University of Sydney um, in a partnership with students? And for many of you uh, today, perhaps, or in the course of your days and weeks at Westmead, walking through a construction site here, we are transforming at Westmead as a precinct, growing from a sea of cranes and construction vehicles to a fabulous new facility by mid-2020. This new facility brings together new opportunities in working with the University of Sydney as a partner, Children's Hospital at Westmead as well as the Westmead um, Adults Hospital. So we want to not only build an amazing infrastructure to deliver best practice care, but we want to ensure that as staff, as our workforce, we are delivering health care in new ways, more importantly, and delivering better health outcomes and better experiences of care. And so in this transformation, we're looking for new opportunities to work in new ways. And our vision for Westmead is outlined by staff and all the partners on the precinct is to create a workable, livable health city that's accessible to all here at Westmead. It focuses on integrating healthcare training, research and education. So bringing education, training and research opportunities right down at the clinical bedside level and promoting our staff and patient well-being. 
as well as attracting the best and brightest students, staff, researchers, educators onto our precinct as a global health precinct. I bring this up because when we started our discussions with the University of Sydney, it became so clear to me how the transformation of an education program at Sydney Uni, as well as the vision for Westmead Precinct just come together. There's such, such synergy in terms of bringing together students and embedding students in problem solving with staff, with our partners on creating a new future and innovation district here at Westmead. So it just made so much sense when we started looking at the why would we engage. We're at the point in our uh, redevelopment planning where the building's designed, um, technologies agreed, working for the, you know, getting that, those dollars in to build a digital hospital for all, and building our ICT and building structure to provide flexibility. We're turning our eyes to workforce and the type of workforce we'll need into the future. What development opportunities do we need to make sure we're creating for our staff today to deliver different care into the future? And so as we're doing our workforce planning, we're trying to understand what are all the impacts going on around us that we need to shape our thinking for workforce planning. And we start talking about emerging technologies and the impact of emerging technologies. And this became our wicked complex problem for the students for this program. It became very clear that this was the project brief we wanted to give to the students. What better opportunity to provide young, technology savvy students um, with a wicked problem than to say, what, what differences are coming in technology today that will impact on how healthcare will be delivered? And what are those impacts on our future workforce? What do we need to start doing now with our staff, our current staff, to deliver care in new ways? And what will we need to do in the future? And how can we use technology not only to deliver healthcare, but to embed education, training, and research? So this is what we went to the students with um, to develop their problem statements and solutions around. And I have to say, right from the start, these students were highly professional, very professional. The questions they asked to understand more about the challenges that we're facing at Westmead were just so, it showed such insight. They're so articulate and so committed to giving us the best possible solutions that we could use, that were tangible um, and credible that we could go forward with. So some of the student concepts that they came up with as in terms of emerging technologies was the virtual assistant role. So where a patient would be in a bed, in their ensuite, they need help, they can use voice activated commands to have a virtual assistant. This would mean, particularly for our nursing staff, they would work in a very different way. They could concentrate on their core skills, provide direct care in other ways for pa other patients at that time. Wearable devices uh, were a big feature on the concepts from students in terms of um, making sure there's inefficiencies of communication were better addressed, particularly again between nursing staff through these wearable devices, they could contact each other, connect each other. This is particularly important when we're dealing with a hospital facility that has more single patient rooms. So staff don't have that immediate line of sight as they have of each other and of patients um, as we have today. And these wearable devi devices that they created and concept um, also um, reminded and prompted staff for their well-being to take a break, to drink more water, <laughs> to go out and get some fresh air. So there are smart devices to promote well-being as well for staff. Virtual Reality Education Hub was a hub that was described as a really immersive education opportunity for all to, um, to develop and core skills. And this particular group also identified an opportunity to um, use virtual reality for empathy training. And I know that confounded a lot of our staff who were present at the time, saying, how can you use virtual reality for empathy training? Doesn't that miss the point of empathy? But we know that virtual reality is so real for people in that moment that there is a real opportunity in our education and development to use VR for empathy, um, to, to realize what it might feel like to be a patient with MS in your mobility, communication challenges, and others. One group uh, promoted the use of blockchain technology for patient health data. Um, and at the final presentation, someone bravely put their hand up and asked the students if they could uh, for a fourth grade level, describe what blockchain actually was. <laughs> for many of us, I think we're still challenged. 
But um, it, it's, you really promoted the idea of patients owning their data and how do clinicians respond to that differently in the future. It's a group who focused on uh, medication management, electronic medication management. I'd say it's our current e-med management on steroids, uh, really reducing errors for patients and helping staff be more efficient in their care delivery. And there's a personal wayfinding app developed and a concept by one of the groups, which was more than just a wayfinding app for visitors and students, but um, also prompts for staff. There's, you walk by the coffee shop, your favorite coffee shop on the precinct, you'd get a prompt that your favorite flat white or piccolo was on special today if you bought an apple as well. <laughs> so really clever ways of promoting staff well-being uh, through a lot of these concepts um, and also helping staff deliver care where it's needed most for patients. The other thing that really impressed me with these students, and it, again, it wasn't something we deliberately prompted in our discussions, or at least from my end, um, is that they brought all of these solutions back to patient care, to better patient experiences, and better health outcomes for patients. So really dedicated for the whole, whole piece. So it was um, really great concepts, a lot of interest, particularly from our technology group, um, in Western Sydney LHD to take these ideas further and develop them further. So on reflection of the experience, look, I think it's a fantastic opportunity to bring diversity to our problem solving here at the precinct as well as for future partners, bringing together different faculties, different views and ways of asking questions was really powerful us, for us and came up with some very different ideas um, that we need to consider here at Westmead. As I said earlier, the, the concepts were very practical they weren't way off on another planet, very practical. These are emerging technologies and future ways of working that are just around the corner for us, probably even before 2020. And they challenged, the students challenged the current thinking of the staff that they came in contact with. So we had them touch base with different partners on the precinct, um, as well as through their presentations. It really challenged our current thinking and brought us out to think how we'll do things differently as an innovation district. As, as I said, certainly potential to develop these concepts further, and particularly with wayfinding in our next semester. One of the highlights for um, us as a partner was the Shark Tank pitch, concept of students pitching their ideas as a warm-up um, with their early concept development and ideas to us. And we had um, Chris brought in a range of experts, including a number of people from our precinct for the students to pitch their ideas to. And the feedback I had from Health Infrastructure, our building partner, as well as from our redevelopment partner, Lena Singh, was like, wow, what great ideas, what fresh ideas, and how committed are these students to helping us deliver a different future here at Westmead? Incidentally, I think one of the benefits, selfishly, <laughs> from um, our side at, at Westmead Precinct is um, it helped showcase Westmead as a potential place of the future to work, that we are future orientated that we're an employer that wants to bring in new ideas, fresh young ideas, students, people of the workforce of the future. So um, I know one of the students actually joined volunteering at Children's Hospital at Westmead, and others were inquiring about the future opportunities of work here at Westmead. So I was like, yes, that's <laughs> great. And the other, um, the other incidental piece in it was, I think, just strengthening, and it's not incidental, but strengthening the partnership with the University of Sydney. And for our staff here at Westmead, it was just such a strong show of what can be achieved in working together and this real enhancement of partnership with the university here at, at uh, Westmead. So it was just, um, I'm hearing different language around that partnership from people here now through this work. So that's it from me. I would just comment that it has been an absolute delight to work with Lorraine and Chris. I think we were fortunate we had the A-team, absolute A-team involved here. And throughout the process, we were so well supported with Lorraine and Chris throughout the whole way. And I think we had you know, the top batch of students here as well. So that's uh, my perspective, and I'll hand over to Chris. Thank you. Um, thanks, Lorraine and Carla. And um, yeah, it's look. It, it it was a pleasure. It was a real journey 
um, for me. I'm a GP by trade and training and more recently a lecturer with the Department of General Practice at Sydney University. And when this concept was pitched to me by some of my senior colleagues, I jumped at the opportunity despite knowing the extra work that it was going to take on. Um, because conceptually I just agreed with the principles so much. I agreed that the future of health and even any industry really is diversity of perspectives and collaboration, and particularly seeing the developments that were already starting to take place in Westmead specifically between that increased collaboration of partnership between the university and the, and the health district. I was very keen to roll my sleeves up and dive into the coalface. So what I thought I would present today <coughs> is how I transitioned from this, which is the unit of study structure that was provided by the university to start with, and this initial wicked problem, as I pitched it to the students as, and the emerging technology's impact on the future healthcare workforce, to this, which is, um, I didn't really want the music, but um, that's the, it, it, this is the video snippets from the presentations that the students finally delivered at the end of semester. So we created a forum, a symposium style forum, where they pitched their final presentation, their concept of idea for how technologies would impact the future health workforce and what are some possible solutions for that interface, pitched it to our industry partner. And so it gave them a chance to really get up on stage and share these innovative ideas in a public forum. And Carla's already touched on the specifics of some of these, some of the group's concepts. Um, she mentioned the wearable device. That actually, the, the group actually created a prototype for this. They actually had, it was non-functional, but it was, you know, in concept with magnetic device attached to a uniform, and they had thought everything through. I was in, extremely impressed with the outcomes from the semester. For me, on a conceptual basis, these technological ideas were really just the carrot that was driving them along through the semester. For me, from an educational point of view, what was more important was to facilitate the understanding and the learning and the development of skills within interdisciplinarity and group work and team-based uh, professional environments. So the irony of this entire semester is that personally, I'm not very tech savvy at all. In fact, I'm one of the last adopters of technologies. So when I was presented this semester's challenge to go from a unit outline of study to deliverables in the presentation format and how do I construct the curriculum around that, I went to my natural tendencies and my office looked like this and I actually put on paper on my walls what each week's class would look like. And this is an actual photo of where I started. Um, Thankfully, I was able to get a lot of help along the way. And I'll go into that a little bit further in a moment. But of course, the thing that drives us all in education are the students and that real human interaction and that opportunity to impart some insight, some experience towards them. I was lucky to have a great group of motivated students. And in the nature of the interdisciplinary uh, course, I had 28 students, a quarter of whom were male, three quarter female, they were all, undergrad all undergraduate students, and therefore, by definition, none were in the field that I come from, which is postgraduate medical studies. Uh, 13 of them were undertaking combined degrees. And you can see from the representative um, courses here, there's a real diversity. <coughs> Obviously, I've included there the, the combinations of degrees as well, but you can see there that we had quite a range of subjects uh, and, and interdisciplinary. So I was lucky enough to be put in touch with Martin Brown, who's an educational designer. And he and I drank many cups of coffee over figuring out how we would approach the semester. And the concept that he mentioned to me that stuck and thought made the most sense was that of design thinking. So this concept that we have an idea or a concept and that we need to take that on a journey to its end semester. And the idea, I broke that into two phases. So the first phase was I'd encourage the students to research and expand their thinking as much as possible around what are all the possible technologies out there? What's coming? What is there? What's possible? Got them thinking, brainstorming. 
Uh, so that was phase one. The middle point of the semester is they start to condense down that thinking into being a little bit more discreet and more defined. And that was the point where I thought, let's bring that into something that can emulate what's going to finally happen in the semester. So let's, that's where we got the idea of the, the shark tank, so a practice pitch of what they had come up with there through phase one. Phase two, on the other hand, was to take that and then think, OK, well, how do we take these ideas and implement them into the environment in which they're going to be existing? If this is an idea that's going to turn into reality, it's got to be applicable to the environment in which it might exist. And so that was phase two, where I encouraged them to then, OK, off you go again, brainstorm, broad thinking, researching, but this time not about the technologies, but about the other side of the, the problem that was being faced with, which was the developing health system. So learn a bit more about the health system, the workforce, and the environment in which their idea may be placed. Now, from an educational point of view, I imparted these longitudinal themes all the way through the semester, which were really about those professional development and those personal skills, which, as I say, the, the design thinking and the development of the, the problem and the concept solution was the carrot. But really, these were the skills that I felt graduates of this unit and of the university would ultimately be more beneficial having. So these concepts of increased skill in team functioning and group work, uh, professional um, development in terms of looking at our own character and how that plays a role in the professional space and its interaction throughout disciplines. But then, of course, remembering that in all that interdisciplinarity, there's also importance to bring it back to relevance within one's home discipline or home faculty. So that was the way I approached the semester. The learning outcomes um, Lorraine mentioned, uh, but I've just listed them there again. And I guess this concept here was one that I really felt was vital, and I imparted it with, for my students in the students from day one, is for them to really start thinking independently. I wanted them to start thinking as if they were professionals themselves from day one. So how would they go about solving the problems that come up through class? How would they go about getting the information and learning independently? Because as we all know, once you get out of university, you are on your own in a lot of ways. You don't have a curriculum to guide you. You often need to find your own, your own resources. But of course, I'm new to this game of designing curricula and such, so I went on some fundamental principles which I drew in graphic form. And these are a couple of, um, a couple of concepts that I used um, to base some of my activities upon. I'll go into them in detail later. But this one here that, um, that was mentioned earlier, this concept of developing a skill in interdisciplinarity, but that being relevant to come back to our home discipline to be able to represent on an interdisciplinary space. So Martin and I went through, week by week, systematically, how are we going to achieve the learning objectives each week, having some ideas of things to do. And I just broke that down into themes for each week. And um, was very systematic in just trying to plan classes. Of course, this was difficult because being a pilot study and doing it for the first time, there was no precedent. I was having to make this up along the way a lot of the time. And I felt that was a relevant thing to do because I wanted to be responsive to what the class itself was generating and be able to be um, engaged with that and have it as a bit more of a fluid activity. Um, of course, there are assessments. And this was a bit of a sticking point throughout the semester, particularly towards the latter half when things started to get a little bit more uh, academic and the marks started to come through. Obviously, students are always a little bit anxious around marks. Um, but the main assessment for the task was a report. And the report was basically a group writing up in great detail their concept of how they would approach this problem space. The presentation, which the video represented earlier, was worth 20%. And these two were early on in the semester. Uh, so the group plan was basically just the, the rough nuts and bolts of how they might start approaching their idea, so the kind of beginning phases of their concept. And the individual statement was there to reflect that bringing back home to professional development and professional representation. And that, it's interesting to note, was the only summative assessment, which is worth 20%, the only summative assessment that was only for the individual. 
all the other marking was based within the group. There were also some formative assessments and these again reflected uh, even more so that personal professional development, that introspective approach to taking stock of what's going on through the student um, along the semester. Personally, I felt that I had some responsibilities and I, uh, I took them on board in terms of really trying to engage students along the way throughout my thinking. I felt if these students are going to be mature learners, then they need to know the pedagogy from which I'm coming from with the course design and how I've come to the, to the ways and the whys of what I'm asking them to do. And that seemed to be uh, very well received. Um, I adopted my model where I thought, you know, okay, at the beginning of semester, I'm going to need to be a little bit more didactic and be a bit more explanatory towards them. But then as the semester comes along, my role as a teacher declines, but my role as a facilitator increases. As the students develop their own independence, they are able to carry along quite independently and function and do their work in class time with me doing very little other than walking around and asking questions and seeing if everything was okay. That worked really well. I'll just touch on a few things that I did um, in, a, in the first couple of weeks because they were during those weeks where I was teaching a little bit more didactically and a little bit more formally and just how I kind of approached that. I really wanted it to be an engaged class. I wanted people to feel that they could speak openly about any ideas they had and not be shot down. So I tried to get some personal ice-breaking activities going through to get people knowing one another. And then, as I mentioned, I explained the course design. I explained what I had been given as a brief and what the assessments were and put it to them to ask how might we go about achieving these outcomes. Really brought them along board. Um, emphasising that participation all the time and, um, and really even said to them that, you know, I don't really mind what you come up with as a deliverable. Sorry, Carla. <laughs> but, um, you know, what's more important to me is how you go about that process of getting there. The other thing I tried to encourage was to brainstorm how we might approach the group dynamics. And so just setting some ground rules in terms of that interpersonal relationship, not only between the small groups, but between the other groups uh, in the class. The other concept that I used on a few occasions was this, where I'd bring in a concept, I'd try and create a small activity in class that practiced that concept, and then I'd get them to implement it into the relevant uh, space for the project itself. So in the first class, I split the students into small groups that were from the same kind of faculty, the same kind of discipline. And I got the person who was the, mo who was the least similar to the others in the group to be a film to record with the mobile phone. And then I asked them to discuss and choose a 20th century technology that had a significant impact on an industry. Right, so a really broad question. And I got them to talk about that and come to a decision for after 10 minutes. And then I gave them 10 minutes to sit and watch the, watch the recording of their group dynamic. So they could try and pick up any characteristics or tendencies that certain individuals might have in that group. Then I mixed the groups up and I tried to make the small groups as interdisciplinary as I could, so to have as many uh, disparate uh, representations of faculty, and did the same process, but this time I asked them to develop a modern advertisement for that older technology, the same process. At the end of that week, I got them to brainstorm again using one of my simple simple to remember concepts about where they might think they start to direct that meta level activity that they did in the small groups into their project. How can they take that brainstorming and put it to be applicable to the Westmead project? And so I use this concept of you might take you know, one technology uh, and have it as a very broad application, have it be applied anywhere throughout the hospital, or you might choose one very specific technology um, that has a very different space of application. So, you know, they might look at all communication within the hospital uh, using a particular device um, or something that is specifically focused to a particular ward using all technologies in general or anywhere along that spectrum. So just starting to get their minds thinking in the ways they were going to approach the problem. I then used my um, opportunity 
where they had a reflective post at the end of week one to go home and think about, okay, we've been in the groups, we're starting to brainstorm, but who are we as individuals and what are we bringing to the class? And that dovetailed quite nicely with that, with that reflective post they had to do. And then the following week, I put all those answers up on the board. So I got all the demographics up and, exp and used that as an explanation of quantitative data. So I said, you know, we've got these many degrees and, this many, and these genders and these characteristics that you've identified with yourselves and also these basic approaches that you've thought to take for the class. And then I tried to demonstrate uh, qualitative analysis and thematic analysis by trying to create these small groups based on some of the themes that were common throughout all those demographics. It was really messy. I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> but but I, think they, I think they picked up on the difference <coughs> at least between the qualitative and the quantitative approaches. And we ended up with six groups that I think did a fairly good job at just mixing the pot of disciplines. Um, and also mixing the pot of ideas and approaches that each student was going to take to the semester. Uh, the following two homework tasks, I used another, the familiar concept again, uh, and this time just trying to practice in their small groups that had then been created a couple of practice runs of how we're going to approach the, the unit, the semester. Um, it was, I, I really tried to delay the decision on what each group was going to come up with until later on in the semester. Because as you said, as, as you may have picked up on some of my themes, I wanted to blow their minds to start with. That first phase of the, of the uh, design thinking, I wanted them to you know, be completely thinking in all sorts of directions. And of course, from a teaching point of view, this is a, course, a, a unit of interdisciplinarity. Of course, you're not going to read this entire slide, it's messy, but I wanted to list just how many colleagues I asked to come and join our class and to help teaching. Okay, because I thought, well, if I'm no expert on either emerging technologies or the Westmead future workforce, uh, so I need to get some interdisciplinarity in my teaching. And these people were so generous with their time and their insights and their assistance to me. And you'll see just scanning down the, the column on the right, the diversity of professional opinions and perspectives that we were able to incorporate into the classroom. So that was the real, and, and this, these were represented throughout both phases, both the, uh, the technology scoping and also the professional scoping space. And I couldn't have done it without all of those co-facilitators. I did want to delay the concept as long as possible. Um, as I said, I punctuated the middle of the semester with this think tank, which was a practice pitch for the students to set the scene. Uh, and that was a really fun time where the students had a chance to just you know, get their words out vocally, uh, publicly and see how it sounded, had about a sounding board of experts to ask questions. Um, of course, there were the usual resources, some reading, and I gave all sorts of background um, theory behind interdisciplinarity, uh, some media releases about Westmead, some of the local health district data. So, you know, there was a lot of background formality in their, in their resource. Um, we also had a bit of fun along the way. I asked them to do their personality type with the Myers-Briggs personality test, which is by no means a, a great marker of personality, but I wanted to introduce this concept of categorization of different personality types and just to start thinking about what it is that we as characters bring to teamwork. And uh, thought in the, in the interest of you know, the tech focus of this, um, of this semester, we clustered them into Star Wars characters, so that was a bit of fun. So it was fun getting along the way. Um, you know, I think if I, as I reflect back on the semester, um, it, it was a really unique innovation and it was great to be a part of. Um, I did have quite a lot of license in creating the content myself and that helped me to remain much more engaged with it and feeling that I was, you know, breathing this thing into, into life through my own accord. And I got to interact with so many other academics from different fields read things that I would never have come across, particularly being the technological Luddite that I have the tendency to be. Um, in terms of what didn't work so well, I mentioned the assessments. I think it's hard to create 
something that accurately assesses a topic as complex as interdisciplinarity and professional uh, development in this regard, in terms of bringing uh, different faculties together with their own learning objectives and graduate qualities and to try and condense that into one subject. Um, as I said, a lot of the material that was being thankfully provided by the uni was sort of only coming <coughs> one or two weeks ahead of where I was in my class planning, so that was challenging. But it's a pilot project, so you know, you sort of accept all that and that's fine. Um, we did have a bit of a professional stoush late in, late in the term in terms of that indi individual statement, which was the, the <coughs> reflective piece that students wrote about their own faculty and its representation and in terms of who was supposed to mark that. And it had been decided initially that the unit coordinators from the faculty would mark that because that's the point at which it reflects relevance back to the home faculty, if you like. But a lot of those people, uh, those academics felt it would be better assessed by the project supervisor because we knew what was happening during class. And so there was a bit of argument around that, um, one of the challenges that we encountered. I think in the interest of time, I won't read through all these quotes. Um, you can cast your eye down, but these are words directly from the students. And there's just some gold in there. You know, they really, they, they took to the semester so positively. They engaged with it so enthusiastically. They were really, um, they were really switched on, motivated, and, and to that end, their feedback that wasn't so positive was also really valuable and I, I know that that will be taken and interpreted and, and, uh, and considered for future iterations of these units. Um, and again, it's always nice to see that some of the things that you think are going wrong as a teacher um, are on the same page as where the students have their discordance as well. The last one is an interesting one to read. Um, but, you know. These are really valuable perspectives. I think it was a successful semester. It was a challenging semester for me as an educator. It was also a really, really enjoyable one. I genuinely mean that. And I think in terms of the outcomes that it delivered, this is an example of the publicity that was run through the Westmead Redevelopment Media. And I know that uh, one of the group's projects has been accepted to be a finalist with the, uh, what was it, the Student Innovation Challenge. So they've, they, it was the digital uh, charts, the digital medication charts. They um, put themselves in for that. They've reached the top five. So there was a real sense that we had achieved something that has realistic potential. And that was fantastic. And so when I step back and I look at the experience of the semester, I think, you know, what it has given to the relationship between Westmead and Sydney Uni is a wonderful uh, step towards an ongoing and successful partnership. So um, yeah, it was a, it was great to be part of, and thanks for listening to the stu to the journey along the way. Um, I think we're going to have some time for some questions. We've got ten minutes. <coughs> so um, what we might do is have questions from here at adults, um, and then if there's any questions from kids, children's hospitals. Um, So we'll just, if there's any questions from this side first, has anyone got any questions for Chris Tucker on the main? Yeah. Well, first of all, congratulations, Chris. I mean, clearly a oh, sorry, microphone. Thank you. So um, first of all, uh, so Tim Usherwood, uh, West Mid Sydney. Um, so first of all, congratulations, Chris and, and Lorraine, for what's clearly been a, a remarkable educational experience for the students. And, um, and I was particularly taken by the penultimate student's comment that um, it was, uh, I don't know if you can actually go back, Chris. Um, there was no clarity of what should be done, and at times I find it stressful. Well, that's the real world, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and to be able to experience that and, and work <laughs> with supportive colleagues and a supportive supervisor in a, in a safe environment where it's not going to affect people's lives, I think is a wonderful thing. So congratulations. Um, clearly, um, and I'm pleased, Clara, uh, um, that, that, that you were happy with, with, with this as well. I, I'm sure there's been a lot of learning for everybody. My question is to Lorraine. 
sustainability. It seems to me that this this um, project depends enormously on, on a lot of resource, a lot of input, but also a lot of skill and enthusiasm from 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 teachers who facilitate these um, uh, will facilitate these programs and 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 there's a there's a component which isn't just about what you can write down and produce in a powerpoint there's a component of engagement and and so forth and, and i hope it's sustainable but i wonder how confident you are um i'm i'm reasonably confident actually because um i think for um, change of this magnitude to be sustainable, it has to come from the top. It has to be supported by whoever's in that sort of management level. We do have that support from Pip Patterson, um, Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Education. Um, there are considerable uh, financial and um, person resources that are, are committed to these ICPUs. Um, so far as I know, we have a commitment for additional funding to employ um, teaching-focused project supervisors from next year. We've already put on three uh, new people for next semester. Uh, there is a, it, it's part of the strategic plan, so there is that commitment there. I think we've actually got a good chance of this um, actually coming off. You can never you can never guarantee it one hundred percent, but I think for once the the um, the elements that you need to make these sorts of big changes sustainable are actually there. Yeah. Probably more a comment uh, that it, you hinted at at, uh, at the first in your first. Uh, the difficulty of uh, in, uh, putting your concepts out there. This is a very intelligent group of young people. And um, I was faced uh, with the same problem with medical students. And what I did was photocopy the lecturers and ask them to lecture me. <laughs> and, and they did a very good job. I drank coffee, they lectured. <laughs> and I knew at least one of them had the message by then, but they did it superbly, and that was replicable. But so when I asked them to do projects, half did it superbly, far better than I could have, and the other half wanted to go back to the lectures, and I found that very interesting, that you couldn't drag them out. So I think possibly the first section you talked about and the difficulties you had may be that they could talk back to you and explain to you what they're going, where they're going to go, and it might make the second bit. Sorry, it's not a question; it's a comment. It might make the second bit uh, easier for you that they've done a great deal of the work on the way through. Yeah, th thank you very much. It's always great to collaborate in terms of ideas of approach, and I think you know that that Tim picked up this comment about there was no clarity of what should be done. At times, I found it stressful. That made me think back to the exact point you mentioned, which was the beginning of semester. Students didn't know how on earth they were going to approach it. And with the approach that I took to the teaching, my response to comments like that were, well, um, what are you going to do about it? You know, that's, it's not for me to say. It's, it's your project. It's your group. You, know, you need to come up with an answer to that. The challenge that came through this particular subject matter was that it was such a new concept to these students that it took them quite a few weeks to, for it to really sink in the scope and the remit that was being asked of them. So, but, but you're right, I mean, when I do think back, I would have, I would have loved to have the chance to, to sit down and say, okay, here are the learning objectives, let's build a semester. You tell me how we're going to teach this semester which I, I guess echoes the, com the comment that you make. Um, thank you. Any more questions here? OK, now we're going to test the technology. Um, is there any <laughs> questions from the children's <laughs> hospitals? Um, you're going to have to unmute and ask your question. OK, now. 
there's either two things happened. You haven't worked out how to unmute it, um, or there's no questions. So um, I, if there's no questions from the Children's Hospital at this point, um, I'd like to thank Chris, Lorraine and Carla for presenting a really interesting new model of education and some new units um, that are being undertaken here at Westmead, or a new unit. Um, and uh, thank you to everyone. And we have, again, me testing technology. I'm a bit like Chris. Techno technologically not great. Um, we have filmed the session, I hope, if I push the right <laughs> button, um, and we will have that up on the, the, the web page if, if I've done it properly. Okay, thank you everyone, and thank you to the three. Coming semester. Sorry, our challenge is there. Yes, well, it's a challenge anyway. Sure, but uh, population yes. needs. Yes, um, different partners. So how do we? What's our strategy for the future as we add other buildings and yes. partners on site? Yes, and as you'd probably be aware, our Floor numbering isn't the same. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, we should have to be really what the police that you're coming on level yeah. three, but.